what you need to know to be prepared for kidney surgery. Let's review the anatomy of the urinary tract. Blood is filtered by the kidney to remove toxins, and urine is formed, which then travels down the ureter into the bladder and then passes through the urinary sphincter and out the urethra with voiding. The kidneys are located in the mid to lower back, and you have two, one on either side. The left kidney generally sits slightly higher than the right kidney. The kidney filters the blood of toxins and waste. It adjusts electrolytes of the body. It adjusts acid and base balance, and it helps control blood pressure. The kidneys also help produce hormones that are involved in bone marrow production, calcium regulation, and blood pressure regulation. And of course, the kidneys produce urine. In terms of the anatomy of the kidney, there are many different parts that are responsible for a variety of functions. You have the renal cortex, which is the tissue and meat of the kidney, the medulla, the calyces, and the renal pelvis where urine is first collected. You have the renal artery and the renal vein that deliver blood to and from the kidney, and then the ureter, which drains urine from the kidney into the bladder. Kidney cancer is very common. It's the sixth most common cancer in men and the eighth most common cancer in women. Risk factors include a family history of kidney cancer and smoking is loosely related. Most patients are asymptomatic with kidney cancer, but some patients can have pain or blood in their urine. This reviews the stages of kidney cancer from stage one, where a tumor is seven centimeters or smaller confined to the kidney, to stage four, where the tumor is large and is spread distantly to lymph nodes and other organs. There are two types of surgeries that can be performed for kidney cancer. First is a nephrectomy, which involves the removal of the entire kidney and possibly removing the adrenal gland, which sits on top of the kidney. Surrounding lymph nodes may also need to be removed. Partial nephrectomy is removing just the tumor and the surrounding rim of normal tissue in the kidney, and then repairing the kidney defect that's caused from removing of the tumor. Let's talk about partial nephrectomy. These are pictures of an open partial nephrectomy where the surgeon is cutting out the tumor, and some surrounding normal tissue. The kidney is then repaired to close the calyces and the remaining tissue of the kidney with suture. Approaches to the operation include a laparoscopic approach, a robotic approach, or open surgery. And your surgeon will go over with you what is the best option given your tumor. This is an example of what the robot looks like in the operating room. It's comprised of a console where the surgeon sits to do the technical aspects of the procedure, the robot with the robotic arms, which is above the patient on the, the bed area, and a console or video screen for assistants to see in the operating room. The open approach, there are a variety of different surgical incisions that could be used, a midline vertical incision, a chevron incision, or a flank incision. In terms of deciding which surgery and approach is best for the patient, it's important to consider the size of the tumor, the location of the tumor within the kidney, the location of the tumor relative to surrounding structures to the kidney, the presence or absence of the other kidney, the patient's baseline kidney function if they've had surgery before, and their comorbidities. The length of the procedure depends upon which procedure is performed, but routinely surgery can last two to three hours. More complex surgery for advanced disease may take up to six hours. The surgical team will update the family during the procedure to let them know how things are going. What are the risks of kidney surgery? They include bleeding that may require transfusion, injury to surrounding structures, or infection. Patients could experience worsening kidney function, a urine leak, adrenal insufficiency, blood clots, heart attack, stroke, pneumonia, or even death. Risks that may be seen later or chronically are kidney failure or insufficiency, bleeding in the urine, infection, or bowel obstruction. There are some alternatives to treatment which could include active surveillance or observation depending upon the size of the tumor and the age of the patient, ablative surgery like cryotherapy or radiofrequency ablation, targeted systemic therapies, which are a mild chemotherapy, and this therapy is usually used in patients that has advanced disease that is spread beyond the kidney. So patients often ask, what about a biopsy 
of the kidney when they have a kidney tumor that's been found. Typically, this is not done before surgery. In certain circumstances, it can be considered for very small renal tumors if the patient is a very poor surgical candidate or if there's a mass that is not clearly a tumor. So what are the expectations following the surgery? We will help to determine your daily diet depending upon the extent of your surgery and your return of bowel function. To help prevent blood clots, external leg pumps that squeeze the calves will be used, and sometimes injection of blood thinners will be used as well. To prevent pneumonia, it's really important to use incentive spirometer to take deep breaths to prevent pneumonia. You'll have a catheter in the bladder, and you may even have a surgical drain. And walking is incredibly important to help with your recovery. If you require a catheter, it's a tube that is placed inside the bladder to drain the urine. You will have a urine bag which will collect the urine, which you can wear on your leg when you're up and walking, or a larger bag at night that will hang on the side of the bed. You may have a drain that is placed at the time of surgery, and this is usually removed before discharge. Sometimes patients will go home with the drain and then be taught how to empty and measure the fluid. In terms of a hospital course, patients can stay anywhere between two and seven days on average. You cannot be discharged unless you're eating regular food, you're passing gas and having bowel movements, and you're up and walking around, and your pain is under good control. Full recovery is about eight weeks after the surgery. You should be able to walk and go up and down stairs at the time of discharge. You can shower when you get home, but we recommend no bathtub. You'll go home with pain medication, and it's important to always take stool softeners with this pain medication. If you become constipated, you can try Miralax, Milk and Magnesia, or magnesium citrate. It's important to limit yourself and rest following surgery. Do not lift anything heavier than 20 pounds for the first couple of weeks. And generally speaking, this can increase by five pounds every week. No tub baths for at least two weeks after surgery. Do not drive for at least a week or two after surgery, and you need to be completely off pain medication to use a car. You should expect to be off of work for six to eight weeks, and we will help fill out FMLA paperwork for you. It's important to know when to call your doctor. If you're experiencing a fever greater than 101.5 or chills, if you notice any redness or drainage from the wound or persistent bloody urine, if you have leg swelling or pain or pain that is not controlled by your pain medication, nausea or vomiting, constipation that is not responsive to laxatives or severe diarrhea, or if you're experiencing shortness of breath, please call your doctor. In terms of cure, this will depend on the final pathology from the kidney and lymph nodes. Typically, the pathology report will come back 7 to 10 days after the procedure. Most times, the patient is discharged home before the pathology report is back. The surgeon will have the scheduler contact you. You will need medical clearance with your primary care physician or internist, and these things will include a history, physical exam, blood work, EKG, and chest x-ray. You'll then be contacted with the surgical date and instructions of where and when to report for surgery. Kidney surgery is a major surgery, so medical clearance is an absolute necessity. Please contact your primary care physician and even your cardiologist to set up testing as early as possible. They will advise your doctor on whether or not to stop aspirin or other blood thinners. This will ensure the highest level of safety for your upcoming surgery. The prior authorization process is very important. We will communicate with your insurance company to determine your coverage and any co-payments or deductibles that you may owe. We will provide you with an estimate of any charges that you may incur. All charges are due prior to the procedure and payment plans can be arranged. Preparing for surgery, it's important to continue to eat as nutrition is very important for healing from major surgery. You may even wish to take supplements like Ensure or Boost. It's important to remain active. We may give you a bowel prep starting the day before your surgery to clean out the bowel, similar to what you have before a colonoscopy. You may have clear liquids, but nothing to eat or drink after midnight before your surgery. A chlorhexidine shower is recommended the day prior or morning of the surgery, and you'll either be given this by your doctor or it can be purchased from a local pharmacy. 
the hospital will call and discuss your medications to take the morning prior to your surgery. If you're taking a blood thinner or aspirin or medicines like Plavix, Coumadin, Zarelto, or Eliquis, your primary care physician, your surgeon, and cardiologist will advise when to stop these. Arrive early at least one hour before your scheduled surgery. Your prognosis and recurrence rate with kidney cancer really depend on you not smoking. Your risk of recurrence is much higher if you continue to smoke, so please stop smoking. If you need help stopping smoking, there are multiple options to help. Medications like Zyban or Chantix, nicotine replacement, psychotherapy, and even hypnosis. Please discuss with your doctor and your primary care physician. If you need help, please go to www.kidneycancer.org. We do hope that your procedure goes well and that you have a speedy recovery. We sincerely appreciate your feedback regarding your procedure, as we're always trying to improve the care that we provide our patients. If you have any questions regarding your procedure, please contact your doctor. Thank you.